Hello and welcome to Monty and Charlotte's Adventures. Wait, hold on. That's better. Now welcome to Essential Handyman. My dad's entering the short hammer handle challenge, so I thought I would enter too. Will this work? The challenge has been set by Scout Crafter. We will leave a link to his channel down below, as well as my channel and my brother's Monty and Charlotte's Adventures. See ya! You probably already guessed that's my daughter Charlotte, she's 12. Her and her brother Monty, he's 14, have got their own YouTube channel, Monty and Charlotte's Adventures. Go and check them out. Uh, no, seriously though, I'm going to do the um, Scout Crafter Short Handle Hammer Challenge. Now I'm sort of halfway through this, so this is a sort of finishing off a refurb. So I took a uh, just a normal ball peen hammer, and I can't find a hat and handle to it, so I've got some spare ones. So I'm going to cut this one down, and I can't find the other one. And it's just a tiny little ball peen hammer, as you can see, which I refurbished a little bit, and I painted red, my favourite colour. All my tools seem to have a bit of a, a red accent theme going on. You know, my file handles, etc. Why? Did an engineer's square always got a little bit of red a bit like the way scaffold companies coat the ends of their board and their poles etc so i've refurbished this i'm going to put it on the um the polishing machine for a little bit see if i can you know polish this up a little bit more get the abrasive wheel out and then the actual get the compounds on the polish see what i can do with that and then i'm gonna if i can find the other handle great if not i'll chop this one down i'll not have a little short sort of handle um, I'll probably, I've got really big hands, so I'll probably, rather than chop it down from this end, I'll chop it down this end, so I can keep the bigger bit. Or I might go for, you know, this is a normal ball pin, this is a slightly, what I've got a selection of handles here. A, a bit of a wider handle, so for, for my hand I can fit it on then. So, I might go for a, something, but I'll work out as I'm going along. But, Scout Crafter, thank you very much for laying the challenge down. And you're going to see me doing this. Cheers. Okay, first time I've ever used a fibre wheel. I can see I've got to be careful because it takes the paint off if it hits it. So if you've got something painted, you don't want it to mess up. Be real careful. Obviously I've got a grinding wheel, like a, a bench grinder, which I've got set up with a semi coarse not very rough um, grinding stone one end for, you know, chisels and plain irons, etc. Flattening screwdriver heads that broke, whatever. And then I've also got a wire wheel on the other side. Now I always use my wire wheel and little brushes and or evaporus to get rid of rust on my tools etc. I've never used one of these before. This is a brand new machine for me. I'm actually midway through doing a um, an unboxing and a review on it but I wanted to use it a little bit before I did a review hence why I'm doing these sort of things. Yeah that's come up pretty nice. You look at that end compared to this end it's definitely put a little short sheen to it. So, um, yeah, I think this is sort of a step after using your wire wheel, from what I understand. See, I'm learning. I watch all these videos of other people doing things on YouTube. Can learn anything on YouTube. You can't qualify on everything, but you can certainly get yourself lots and lots of new skills. And hopefully, I'm passing on a few tips to those that are less experienced in the world of buffing and polishing than I am. Okay, so that's the head. Now, Okay, I've got a couple of polishing compounds. Again, I've never had one of these, so I don't know. This is me learning as I go. 
The first one I'm going to use is the blue one. I'm going to give that a whirl. Let's move you a little bit closer. Hopefully this isn't shaking the life out of you too much. compound on there. I say first time I've ever used it so the fibers are going everywhere. Let's give this a whirl. I don't normally go for a polished finish on my tools because I use them. I don't have many that just sit there looking pretty or stuff on the wall. Well, I wouldn't mind so it's not big enough for that. So I, um, because I use them, I don't go for a, polish, a mirror finish, because they only get dirty. And, you know, I don't have sets of tools, yeah, I've got uh, more than one hammer and I've got quite a few um, different types of uh, clamps now. But things like, you know, I don't have five or six types of screwdrivers of the same size, etc. Just, um, I'm not really a tool collector, I'm a tool user. And I've got the money. That's probably the most important reason. That's looking pretty good. Right. An old tenon saw out. Now we're going to go for the pink polishing compound, which is the last stage. <laughs> it's going to have to be the last stage. I've only got two of them. And this is a tool that I will be using. Not one that I'm just going to display. Will be my go-to for those small pin pin nails or you know tacks veneer pins when I'm not using my veneer pin tool of course which I love for pushing pins in right so year of little patience is I that's me done about as good as that head's going to get. That's not a bad finish. That'll do for me. That's as polished as I need my tools to be. I've just got to whack a little short handle on this and job's a good one. Okay, so I found my old handle. It's pretty short anyway because I chopped it off to, um, to get it out of the head, head of the handle. Head on a hammer, and if you look clear, top one's my old one. It, it, it's a it's a bit bigger than the um, the one I was going to put in, but it's uh, it's not as big as the, as the second one I was I was giving you an option on. So looking at the pin hammer I've got here, that handle is a 13 inch handle. The replacement hammer handle I've got, as you can see, is a 13 inch hickory. So they're all 13 inches. So this. One, as I say, is um, just repeating myself, it's 10 inches. So we're going to go a little bit smaller than that. We'll measure it from the thick end. We're going to take this, we've got, I want it about 8 inches long from the head. So if we take it 8.5 to allow for the head. Let's just measure that. Measure one round the other way and we'll bring the line all the way around. Bring that line round. Match up with that one there. No need to be there or thereabouts. So we're going to take that much off. Take it nice and slow because I don't want any breakout. Too late now. 
I had to change my mind and want it longer. This saw is lovely, but again, problems with big hands. I know you meant to put your finger in, but if you look there, that's just my hand is jammed in there. My hand's too big for this saw. But, you know, unless I want to pay those money to get a custom made one, it's a problem I'm going to have to put up with. Hands like shovels. What we got now? We should have eight and a half. <gasps> yep, eight and a half inches. So that's going to be a small little hammer, isn't it? Well, I've got that on the end. That should be fine. Perfect little small amounts of work. We're going to cut it down the length. That's making a lot of noise. I might be shaking the camera too much. Let's try the old pull saw instead. See if that's any easier. put a new handle on a hammer before so I don't know how far to go down we've got about 15 mil hope that should be all right obviously we've got a bit of shaping to do before that goes in now I'm a great lover of the standish sure form I think these are great things and I'm imagining they're going to be good for shaping this I've got a few different type of ones you know a couple of vintage ones but um I think this will be pretty good maybe start off with this one just shaping the head of this. Oops. I don't have a spoke shave. I might as well be giving that a go. I don't have a pull knife. I might as well be giving that a go. I've got some chisels. But I feel I'd probably get a little bit more control doing it this way. On its way, a little bit more needed, obviously. Just go all the way around it. Don't want to take too much off. Find yourself in a actually. Doesn't really matter, I'll just go a little bit further in, wouldn't it? Doesn't look like there's an up or a down on this. more on the edges there. That's what it looks like the problem is here. Let's give this a go. Oh, it's nearly there. Well, I'd say that was in far enough, wouldn't you? Let's get a little wedge in there. Okay. I think the wedge is good. The wedges in there. We just put a metal wedge in there as well. That should do it. That should do the job. Split that wood. It's 
That's about as good as I'm going to get it, I reckon. It ain't, it ain't tidy. But it ain't moving around. That's what it looks like at that end. It ain't, it ain't tidy on the top, but for a first effort, it's passable. Let's test it out. Got a bit of pallet wood. 50mm screw. Let's see what happens. Hey, well, I suppose we might, we might have to pre drill that, mightn't we? Let's, just, let's try it again. Seems to work fine. Okay, I think this is going to be my entrance into the Scout Crafter short handle hammer challenge. The length from one end to the other is eight and a half inches, and the handle itself is just over seven and a quarter inches. I'm going to coat this in bald in seed oil um, just to sort this out. I know we'll smart on the end of this up a little bit, um, but as far as the day goes, I think that's um, that'll do for me. It's a nice small one, but the handle's not too small, so it's going to give me a little bit more control, because quite often a lot of the times when you use these pin hammers and your handle's right down there, unless you shank down on them, which changes the way that you, instead of using your wrist, because the handle hits your wrist, so you have to change the way you hold it, your wrist. Shanking down on it, is, it gives a different sensation. Choking down, shanking down, choking down probably, a lot of people would say. I think shanking down is probably a bit of a London accent expression. Um, yeah, so that'll give me a little bit more control. And I quite like that. So, thank you Scout Crafter for putting the challenge on. I hope everyone appreciates my efforts. <laughs> Don't take this as the as the gospel or how to change a handle or a hammer or a pickaxe or anything. Because although it was my first effort, it was fraught with mistakes. But we got there, you know. It doesn't look brilliant. I'm hoping my future efforts on handles will look better than this. Thank you everyone for watching. Take care of yourselves. See ya.